Hi, this is Rob Shore, Director of Global Technical Sales for Corient. In one of my previous videos, I talked about the networking concept of Optical Express. In that video, I focused on what Optical Express is and the benefits that can, that can provide to a network. And those benefits include everything from capital expenditures, lowering the overall cost of the network, uh, improving the operational efficiency of the network, just making networks easier to operate, dramatically accelerating service activation, right, turning up services much more quickly in the network, uh, and improving network reliability, both from mesh restoration capabilities uh, and from reducing the number of times people touch the network. On top of that, we looked at how Optical Express can really fundamentally change the way you architect your network, enabling you to put critical resources in more locations and fundamentally enabling any type of logical topology over virtually any type of physical topology. So what I want to do in this video now that we understand the benefits of Optical Express is understand how to enable Optical Express in networks, the technologies, the techniques, and even some of the challenges associated with enabling Optical Express, particularly in larger networks. So again, we take a look at what Optical Express is. Optical Express is the ability to launch an optical signal through a network, have it traverse the entire network, arrive at its destination, and traverse these intermediate nodes purely optically, right? Optically expressing through these intermediate locations. And one of the biggest challenges with developing optical and building Optical Express enabled networks is the idea of managing power levels. The idea here is I'm launching these signals at a certain power level, and as they traverse the network, they're going to continue to lose power as they go through the network. At every node I traverse, all this fiber go across. So if I go long enough distance, I'm going to end up at the, my destination at a relatively low power level. The reason this is a problem is at that destination, I'm going to have an optical receiver that needs to detect that power, that detect that signal. And these receivers have a receiver sensitivity. They can only detect signals at a certain power level. So if my power level is too low, my receiver might not be able to detect it. So one way to overcome this problem, this challenge, and enable you to transmit signals further across the network and even optically express through more locations is a technique called optical amplification. Optical amplifiers are these devices that take in all the optical signals on a fiber and they will amplify, they'll increase the power level of those signals. And by the way, it does that purely optically and on the optical domain, so there's no electrical regeneration or termination. And it does all the channels on that fiber all together. And the idea now is I can go to a very low power, very long distance, install one of these optical amplifiers and it'll raise the power level back up again to make sure it's within the range of the receiver, so it's above the receiver sensitivity level. So again, this is a really effective technique in enabling Optical Express over much longer distances, over much larger networks. But there's a challenge when you use optical amplification in a network, and that challenge comes from these intermediate locations, and the locations where I have both Optical Express traffic passing through and I have locally added traffic. If you think about it from a power perspective, on these long channels, the channels that are optically expressing through, they have a much longer distance to traverse, and they're going to arrive at their destination at a much lower power level. Conversely, this red wavelength, this locally added wavelength, it has a much less distance to travel. Right? So as it goes through the network and arrives at its destination, it's going to be at a much higher power level. And this is a big problem for optical amplifiers. Optical amplifiers, they attempt to amplify all channels to the same level or the same amount, and they only have a limited amount of power. So these high power channels, when they come in, they're going to actually steal power from the amplifier and make the amplifier unable now to amplify the low channel high enough to get it above the receiver sensitivity. And this is a, it's actually a pretty nefarious problem here because I could turn this purple wavelength up and it's all good to go. I have the amplifier up there, the amplifier is working fine, the purple wavelength and that service is running no problem. A few months later I can come in and a different group of people can go in and install this red wavelength, right? And they're going to go in and turn that red wavelength up and they're going to get it up and working and it's all fine and they walk away and they're all happy. But that red wavelength is now going to steal the power from that amplifier and it's going to actually cause the purple wavelength to stop working. So these people turn up the red wavelength, they go home, and now a person in the operations center is going to say, oh no, the purple wavelength went down. And they're going to have to do a whole troubleshooting exercise to figure out why the purple wavelength went down. And the reason it went down is because this red wavelength is stealing the power from the amplifier. So as I hit this amplifier, it's very important for these amplifiers that before channels hit them, they're balanced as accurately as possible. You need to make sure that all the power levels of all the various channels coming in there are as close to the same power level as possible. Because that way the amplifier can raise all of those signals back up again uh, to a, a point where the receiver can detect them. 
Uh, and a good analogy about that, by the way, is if you think of like a crowded room with a bunch of people talking, right? If they're all at the same, talking at the same level, you can amplify that signal to pick up all the individual conversations. But if you have one person comes in and starts talking really loud and drowning out all the other people, even if you amplify those signals, you're gonna amplify the loud person as well and they're gonna continue to drown out everybody else. So again, before I apply amplification to optical signals, I really need to make sure that those signals are basically the same level or as close as possible. So if this is what I'm trying to achieve, how do I go about doing that? Well, the real the problem occurs right at these intermediate locations where I have both express channels and add channels. And this is where you're going to want to attack the problem. What you need to do to enable optical express in a network is to go to these locations and balance the express channels and the add channels. Now, this does only apply to networks with amplification. right? If I can reach my destination without any amplification, uh, I don't need to worry about power balancing at all. But as soon as I put amplification anywhere in the network, I need to make sure at these locations that I'm balancing my express channels and my add channels. And this is where you want to attack the problem. And by the way, this also goes to the same point where if I don't have express and add channels at the terminal points of the, uh, the network, where maybe I only have add channels, I don't need to worry about power balancing here because all the channels are launching into the fiber at the same power level. It's only at these locations where I have express channels and add channels. So again, this is where you want to attack the problem. You want to use techniques to ensure those channels are balanced before they hit the fiber so they arrive at the amplifier at close enough power level so that it can amplify it and no individual channel is going to drown out the other ones. So if this is where I want to attack the problem, how do I go about, how do I go about balancing the, the uh, channel power at those locations? Well, really there's only two techniques, right? Two techniques, I'm trying to balance the express to the add. And those two techniques and those two technologies are attenuation, essentially going to these add channels and installing an attenuator that's going to bring down the power level of the add channel to make it match the power of the express channel. So again, I'm launching into the fiber at the same power levels. So that's one technique of lowering the power of the add channel. The other technique is raising the power of the express channel. Now I'm going to put an amplifier, an optical amplifier, as those signals come into this node, I'm going to raise the power levels to match the launch power of the add channels. So again, without any attenuation, now I can launch both of those signals into the fiber at the same power level. So these are the only two techniques. These are the only two ways that you can balance channel powers at these intermediate locations. And of course, each one of these options comes with its own set of pluses and minuses. Now let's take a look at the attenuation option first and look at its pluses and minuses. One of the best benefits of the attenuation option is that it can be very, very cost effective especially on a per channel basis, it can be very cheap, especially if you're using these fixed attenuators. Those can be tens of dollars. So extremely cost effective. But even if I'm using automated attenuators, they're still relatively cheap on a per channel basis. So especially for networks that don't have a lot of wavelengths, this can be an extremely cost effective option. Another benefit of doing this on a per channel basis of putting attenuators per channel is that I can then fine tune the attenuation for each individual channel and that enables me to better ensure that my channels are all launching at the same power level because I can customize it on a per channel basis. So I get much better uh, power balancing capabilities when I do this on a per channel basis. Of course, that same benefit is also a negative, right? Because I'm doing this on a per channel basis, it's going to be much more operationally intensive. Every single time I turn up a new channel in my network, I need to understand what kind of attenuation I need. I need to buy the attenuators. I need to install every attenuator, right? So it's just dramatically more manually intensive. And that also, by the way, can have an impact on cost as well. Because I'm doing this on a per channel basis, yeah, if I use fixed attenuators, no big deal. I mean, 10 bucks, this is not going to hurt the cost of a network. But if I'm using automated attenuators and I have to do this every single time I turn up a channel, as the number of channels grows in the network, it can also escalate pretty significantly and in some cases rapidly the cost of the network. So that's one issue. Another issue is, of course, what I'm doing here is I'm lowering the power level of the signal. I'm actually now launching into that fiber at a lower signal level. I'm going to the least common denominator. Because I'm launching at a lower power level, it means I can't go as far before needing additional amplification. So too much attenuation can result in a significant amount of additional amplification, which costs more money, which actually offsets the benefit of the low cost. So again, it can definitely be cheaper up front, but too much attenuation uh, can result in a more uh, much more expensive network overall. One other uh, downside of uh, attenuators is because I'm doing things only on a per channel basis, they don't really have any kind of network visibility. 
So they don't understand what any of the other channels are doing. They don't understand any of their network conditions. So if for some reason I need to change the amount of attenuation that these uh, devices are providing, I really have to do that manually. Even with automated attenuators, they'll attenuate to the level you want them to go to, uh, but I have to manually tell it what, what level I want it to be. So if I have changing network conditions, I need to constantly be monitoring my network, uh, recognizing when changes need to occur, and then instructing the network or even manually swapping out attenuators uh, to ensure that everything stays balanced. And again, this is, a, this is a, a particularly nefarious problem again also, like I mentioned before, because this wavelength, right, if I don't do this properly, it's not just a matter of this one wavelength going down. If this wavelength gets out of whack, it can start stealing the power of the amplifiers, bringing other wavelengths down. So, right, so not only is it a manually intensive, now manually intensive scenario, a solution, uh, but it also really can have very profound and significant impacts on the network, really having network-wide traffic implications. So again, you have this very manual based process that needs to constantly be monitored. And as I mentioned in one of my previous videos, one of the biggest sources of failures in a network is human interaction. So this one of the other big negatives of the attenuator option is it is very manually intensive. And anytime you have people making changes to a network, it's an opportunity for more service failures. And again, I just mentioned, it's not just a matter of the one service going down, it can bring other services down in the network as well. So those are the pluses and minuses of attenuation, of using attenuation as a mechanism to balance power levels. The other option now, the amplification, it also comes with its own set of pluses and minuses. One of the best benefits of amplification is that these amplifiers that I'm going to put in place, they typically amplify all the signals on the fiber, meaning I only have to do it once. I plug it in once, it'll amplify the first channel. As I go to add additional channels, I don't need to add any additional equipment the amplifier will just keep amplifying all those signals across that fiber uh, at the same time. So again, it can end up being dramatically operationally simpler, especially as my network grows. So that's a, a very significant benefit. One of the other benefits, of course, along with this is that I'm providing amplification. So I'm actually raising the power level of the signal. So I'm launching into that fiber on the other end there. Uh, I'm launching at a higher power level. That means that I can now go further without needing even more amplification. So it can actually reduce the amount of additional amplification required. Remember, with attenuation, I'm launching at lower power levels, resulting in more amplification on the other end. So this is one thing, right, is that uh, it, uh, it works for any number of channels. The other benefit of this is that these amplifiers, these are active components. They've got circuitry and software and the power. So they're active components, which means I can actually build in all kinds of automation function on there I want as well. In addition to the amplification itself, I can build on things like power monitoring, uh, automatic gain control, integrated management. I can build all kinds of additional operationally simplifying functionality because it's an active component. Of course, because it's an active component isn't a benefit, but uh, it's also a negative as well because because it's an active component, it's more expensive, right? Active components are going to be more expensive, and these amplifiers universally will be more expensive than any attenuator solution on a piece-by-piece -piece basis. So an especially when I have low channel count networks, and I only have a few, uh, need a few attenuators, the attenuator solution will definitively be cheaper uh, up front. Now, of course, over time, especially if I'm using automated attenuators, uh, that cost can grow, and I can actually reach a crossover point where attenuator options end up being more expensive than amplifier options. But there's no question an amplifier-based solution is going to be more expensive day one than uh, an attenuator-based solution. One other downside of amplifiers, or an amplifier-only solution, is that amplifiers only do the aggregate signal and they amplify everything at once. So that's a bonus because I get to do all the channels at once, but they treat all channels the same way. So if channels came in with power disparities, right, they're going to maintain those power disparities as I go through the amplifier. Right? The attenuator option, because I'm doing things on a per-channel basis, I can actually compensate for any, any power disparities and make sure, I've, I've, uh, make sure I'm launching all those signals at the exact same power level as close as possible into a fiber. So again, amplifiers are good because they do all the channels, but they do treat all channels equally, so it's not going to be able to provide as accurate of power balancing as when I do the individual attenuators or per channel attenuation. So these are really the pluses and minuses of attenuation and amplification. And like I said, there are pluses and minuses to each one. There is no right answer for all networks. It's going to depend on the network architecture, the kind of services that you're providing, uh, really your, your, your appetite for operational uh, expense, how, how much operational effort you want to put into it, how much money you're willing to spend up front. So there's a variety of different factors that go into deciding which of these two uh, techniques that you want to use. On top of that, right, this is for individual smaller networks. As I go into these larger network environments, I actually am not forced to choose between these. I can actually use both of them. 
that I can actually, for these larger networks, when I need improved performance and, and I want both accurate power balancing and a uh, amplification, I can use solutions that have both of these techniques uh, to get better network solutions. Now, of course, now I'm spending even more money because I have to buy both aspects of the solution, but it will result in a network with better performance. On top of that, even though these are the only two mechanisms that you can use to balance power, there are a whole variety of additional functions and features that I can build in a network to improve automation. For example, I can build things like power monitoring, and this will monitor the power levels of each and every individual channel, so I get accurate understanding of what the power levels are, and I can even feed that information back into the attenuators and into the amplifiers, uh, so I can get even more accurate power balancing and amplification. And I can do this in an automated fashion. So not only do I get network with better performance, but I get network with more automation. I can also uh, imp implement things like optical supervisory channels. This not only provides me remote management of, of uh, individual locations, but I can also use that supervisory channel to provide feedback loops, right? I can launch a signal through a network, and at the far end, I can detect how well that network performed, how well that channel performed, and I can feed that information back to the source and use that information to further refine my amplification and attenuation to get even better performing networks and enable signals to go even further and survive even more uh, network interruptions. Finally, there's a technology wavelength selective switching. Now these are, of course, continuing to increase. Every time I add one of these operational functions, I'm increasing the overall cost of the network, uh, but also increasing automation, reliability, resiliency, things like that. Uh, and what wavelength selective switching will do is it'll enable me to steer wavelengths in different directions at every location. Uh, and I can even build wavelength selective switches with integrated attenuation, all that kind of stuff. So again, I have all these options on, on the different operational functions I want to add to a network, but I'm still back to the concept that the only ways that you can uh, monitor power, manage power, is with amplification and attenuation. Those are the only two techniques. And where you want to do that is at those intermediate locations that have both uh, express channels and add channels. So this brings us to the end of the video, right? We've seen in previous videos the benefits Optical Express can provide. In this video, we talked about what are the technologies and techniques and things to watch out for uh, when trying to enable Optical Express in your network. Now, if you're interested in more videos, we have more videos on specifically how Corian has integrated these different technologies and techniques into our specific solutions, uh, both in making a more automated Rotom-based solutions, as well as extending some of this functionality, some of this automation and optical express capabilities further to the edge of a network. So if you're interested in any of those videos or any of Corian's other solutions or technologies, please come and visit us at Corian.com. That brings us to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.